You guys are never going to believe this, but Adidas has made a sneaker that uses the upper of one of their football boots and incorporates a boost midsole. It's only like the 12th one. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Adidas X18 Plus TR in the two energy mode pack colorways that were put out. This really good looking solid blue upper and the don't stare at my feet too long or you might go blind solar yellow color. Take your pick on which one is your favorite. Either way, this is their latest casual wear sneaker that of course is football boot inspired, taking the upper that is loosely based off of what you'll find from the new X18.1, at least as far as the base construction is concerned. And of course it incorporates a boost midsole, similar to the Ultra Boost, but not quite the same. However you wanna look at it though, I actually think it's a really good looking sneaker and they are extremely comfortable, something we'll be talking about in more detail in today's video, including how they fit and feel and of course look on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire video. And if you're interested in either of these for yourself, which by the way, they are limited edition, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. you will be able to pick these up below their normal $200 retail price. If you guys do end up enjoying the video, don't forget to support it with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. Included with the boots is a fancy limited collection box that actually is white in color, but they put this protective sleeve to protect the white box, which is kind of weird because you'll see the box is all white with the Adidas branding and limited collection there printed on the side. It even has the limited collection ribbon to pull the drawer out, which you do like this. As you can see, the paper is also limited. No string bag though, so. Let me start by answering the number one question that I always get whenever reviewing soccer inspired sneakers. Can you actually use these as indoors? And the simple answer to that question is no. The upper, while technically being speed mesh, does not have any of the same reinforcements, nor does it fit the same way at all. So lockdown structure, responsiveness, general stability just is not there. Not to mention the entire bottom of the shoe is just regular foam. So if you were hoping to have traction, there won't be any. These are made for walking around and I suppose if you wanted to jog in them, you could definitely do that as well. But anything more than that, probably not a great idea. So as I'm sure most of you are aware, this is the Adidas X18.1, which features distinctive elements like the speed mesh upper, obviously the positioning of the Adidas stripes and the off-centered lacing system, the clear inspiration for the X18 Plus TR, which is kind of a confusing name considering that the Plus is generally attributed to laceless models within the Adidas brand, like the X18 Plus football boot. These are clearly modeled after the 18.1 though. So a little bit of confusion there, but not that big of a deal in my opinion. Either way, you're gonna find that this does feature the same speed mesh base as the X18.1, but without any of the reinforcements, as I mentioned, has a pretty straightforward liner that really doesn't add much structure to it. It's pretty much just very thin, flexible mesh, which is extremely comfortable what they were going for with this particular sneaker design-wise, and it doesn't have the polyurethane top layer at all. So the mesh, for the most part, is left unprotected, as you'll find with a lot of running shoes or trainers in general. Then you're going to find the Adidas stripes blue on blue with this particular colorway, and you can see that it does have the same lacing system in regards to where the laces are positioned, but instead of using dual lace holes, they actually did these little nylon straps, which I would have liked to have seen the same dual lace hole setup as the X18.1, not sure why they did this, but they did for whatever reason. You're also gonna notice it's a slightly different material here through the tongue and heel area, kind of like a textile elasticated material. I'm not exactly sure what you would call it, but it feels very premium and I think looks the part as well. Then you of course have the Boost midsole, which is, I don't know if it's taken from anything in particular as far as another Adidas lifestyle or running model is concerned, but it's full length Boost, really thick layer of it as well. Very comparable in regards to underfoot cushioning to that of the Adidas Ultra Boost, which I really do like. Plus I think it looks quite cool. And then the base, as you can see, there's a line right here, that is all solid foam. So you have a thick layer of that as well, meaning that you're a little bit higher off the ground than you perhaps might expect based on how these look. 
Either way, in regards to comfort and styling, I think they did a really good job, especially with this blue color. But as you can see, they also made them in solar yellow, this colorway being obnoxiously bright and certainly not for everyone. You have the speed mesh upper in solar yellow with the mid layer for whatever reason actually being white in color rather than blue on blue like it is on the other colorway. Not exactly sure what the logic is there. You can maybe see it a little bit better here on the medial side. And you can see that the Adidas stripes have a little bit more of a chrome effect to them, which I actually think looks quite cool. The internal liner is blue just as it's flip-flopped on the blue pair to neon yellow, which I think is a cool little added detail. And of course the midsole remains exactly the same with the white boost and the white foam on the bottom. As far as the insole is concerned, they are removable on both. I'll give you guys a look at these as well. Neon yellow for the neon yellow ones, blue for the blue ones, pretty straightforward. It's basically a synthetic suede lining on top and a single layer of this white foam. Pretty standard running shoe insole from the Adidas brand and it feels quite comfortable as well. If you're wondering which one I prefer, I definitely prefer the look of the blue ones, mainly because I'm just not into wearing super, super flashy neon yellow sneakers, but everyone's got different taste in that regard. But I am very excited to see what Adidas is gonna do with future colorways of this sneaker, because I really think it's a cool design, and I'd love to see a more black-based or a more white-based colorway with just simple accents. I think it could look really, really clean. And I love the fact that it is inspired by the X18.1 boots, but doesn't necessarily look too spacey like we've seen from a lot of the other soccer inspired sneakers that Adidas has put out. But let me know which one you guys like better down below in the comments. And then there's the question, are they as good as the Adidas Ultra Boost, which is arguably one of, if not the most popular running shoes on the market right now that most people buy to wear casually, but that is one of the key differences here. This is a real running shoe where these are more so pretty much just geared towards casual wear and walking around. Now, if you're comparing the two in regards to looks, obviously that is totally down to personal preference. For me, aesthetically, I think that the Ultra Boost is just a cooler looking sneaker, but that is not to say that these are ugly at all. I really do like the look of these. And again, I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with future colorways. In all blue or all neon yellow, I think the Ultra Boost just looks a little bit better. It's also worth noting that you are gonna find more premium materials for the upper of the Ultra Boost as well. While I've never been a huge fan of the plastic inserts through the midfoot, I understand why they're there. And I definitely don't think that they look bad, but the rest of the upper is entirely made out of prime knit, which is a more premium material, wraps your foot a little bit more closely, and I think looks more expensive as well versus the mesh base upper on this particular shoe. But again, not to say that these look bad at all. You're also gonna find that they both have boost cushion setups, which honestly do feel more similar than you might expect. I think, again, I'd give the edge to the Ultra Boost just in regards to the premium sensation. Because this is an actual running shoe versus something made more for casual wear, this just feels a little bit more solid under your feet. And I also really like the fact that you do have a true rubber outsole with the Ultra Boost versus just this standard foam that doesn't really provide much traction, which is fine for walking around. But again, if you plan on running in them, the Ultra Boost is just gonna be a much better option for you. The price is also worth taking into consideration in that the Ultra Boost retails for 180, these guys retail for 200. So they're actually $20 more for like I said, a lot of elements that aren't quite as premium as the $180 Ultra Boost. So which one you should buy ultimately is totally up to you. But I think if you're talking about a quality sneaker for the money, the better value for money would technically be the Ultra Boost. And then the final thing worth talking about is the weight. In a size 9.5 US, the X18 Plus TR weighs in at about 9.7 ounces, which actually is pretty light for this style of sneaker. It's a mesh base upper, boost as a cushioning setup isn't particularly lightweight, and you have a significant amount of it here. And honestly, they feel very lightweight when they're on your feet, extremely comfortable. I would say a little bit lighter than the Ultra Boost as well, if you wanna compare them directly to that. But in regards to weight for casual wear, you're not gonna have any issues with them. So here's a look at both the blue and yellow X18 Plus TRs on feet. And as you can see, they definitely have distinctively different looks just based simply on the colorway. The neon yellow ones are extremely bright and obnoxious. The blue ones are a little bit more low profile, but they're still bright blue sneakers. And you can also see on the blue ones, I swapped them out for some junior length white reflective SR4U replacement laces, just because one, I can't help myself. And two, I feel like the solid blue upper kind of needs to be broken up a little bit. And the white laces actually match and accent the midsole really, really nicely. Makes them look a little bit cleaner. If you're interested in some SR4U laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com there'll be a little pop-up on screen. As far as how these fit and feel on feet, they are extremely comfortable. Again, 
very comparable to something like the Ultra Boost. The Boost, extremely nice cushioning underfoot. The upper is entirely made out of mesh, so it's very flexible and feels very soft and sock-like on your feet. And honestly, this upper, while it looks a lot like the X18.1, it just has a much more relaxed fit in general that is pretty much good to wear all day long without any issues with discomfort whatsoever. As far as width and overall fit is concerned, like I said, it's a much more relaxed fit. I would say that these are gonna be wide enough for just about anybody, even though they do have a one-piece upper. It's very stretchy through the middle there where you do have the two parts of the speed mesh connected. So width, like I said, is not gonna be an issue for just about anybody. And as far as sizing is concerned, in a size nine and a half US, which is the same size that I would wear in the actual X18.1 football boot, these actually fit a lot bigger and a lot wider in general. So if you like your sneakers to fit snug, I would say stick with the same size, just go true to size in general. But if you do like that little bit of extra space, going a half size up is definitely not a bad idea either. Just depends on what you like the feel of. So in conclusion, I really do like the X18 Plus TR. I think the styling is quite cool and that it does look a lot like the X18.1. I think there's a lot of potential for future colorways of this shoe and the comfort is undeniable. This is probably the most comfortable sneaker out of everything from this line within the Adidas brand right now. Are they pricey at $200? Yes, but I think if you can justify the cost or if you're patient and you can wait for them to go on sale, because inevitably I don't think that these are going to sell out. They probably will get discounted sooner rather than later. Wait until they go on sale and then pick them up because I definitely think you're gonna be happy with them. Anyways, guys, that is it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in some of these for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR for you coupon codes. You'll be able to pick these up below their normal $200 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and as always, thanks for watching.